This might be the most powerful AI tool I've tested so far. When I first looked at SciSpace about a year ago, it already had quite a lot of productivity tools. You could chat with PDFs, you could run literature reviews, you could generate citations. I don't think they had the paraphraser tool yet, but essentially it was a collection of separate tools that were helpful, but you still did have to use them one by one. Now it's grown into something much bigger, which is the SciSpace Agent. This is an advanced agentic AI tool that acts as the interface for more than 150 research tools and databases. So that's PubMed, Google Scholar, Archive, funding databases like grants.gov, and combines them with SciSpace's own features. That's the literature reviews, the paraphrasing, poster creation, basically a huge range of things you might need day to day, plus some little extras, including its database of 280 million papers, 50 million of those being open access. Instead of jumping between the different tools like before, you now have the SciSpace agent, which pulls together the right tools and databases in the background based on the task. So in this video, I'm gonna show you four things that you can do with the SciSpace agent. Doing a preliminary exploration of the field, supporting your literature reviews, poster creation, which I haven't seen before, and then the journal finder. So let's start with something simple, but actually really important, which is identifying research gaps. Normally, when you download a paper, you're trying to work out not just what it's about, but also what's missing and where you can contribute. You can use SciSpace to evaluate gaps and synthesize insights from recent literature to extract these gaps. So it gives you a comprehensive gap analysis. So on the agent, you drop in a paper and you ask something like, highlight gaps in this research and suggest areas that need more investigation. The output will analyze the paper and consider multiple aspects of the field, such as the findings, the methodological insights, biases and implications for the field. And then it produces an in-depth output to inspire making a case for further investigation. Now, these are the kind of prompts that can spark ideas for your own research. Obviously, I wouldn't blindly follow its suggestions. Gaps are very context dependent and you know your research best. It does sketch out where the research may be underexplored. And that provides both key takeaways alongside a systematic review style report. So you can frame how your potential project sits in the bigger picture, which is something examiners and reviewers are always going to look for. After you've decided on a topic, you're gonna want to move on to your literature review. And that's usually the part of the research that takes the most time. Usually people like it the least, but actually I love writing a literature review, seeing what came before me and mapping out the field either in a thematic or chronological way. So let's head back and start a new chat with a research question. So I asked SciSpace agent, how can AI be adapted for non-STEM subjects in higher education and what are the challenges and opportunities in humanities, social sciences, and creative fields. The output is a proper search summary. It shows you exactly where it's searched, where it's looked through its own database, its full text search, Google Scholar and archive, and how many papers it's pulled from each. There's also a table which compares how different fields are approaching AI. So in the humanities, it highlights things like automated transcription, student writing support, and where we are now, which is literature discovery. And then it compares that with different fields. It also brings out some of the bigger questions, whether AI tools can really cope with nuance in the humanities, biases, or how assessments might need to change when students have these tools. At the same time, it pulls out the opportunities from scaling text, media analysis, to new ways of supporting student learning. It's exactly what you want a literature review to show. Now, instead of starting from scratch, you've actually got a really strong way into the field that you can use to read and critique. Once the review is finished, there's another option here. So you can ask SciSpace to actually make a poster out of it. 
And what it's doing is taking all of the structured sections from the review, so the applications, the strategies, the challenges, and then repackaging those into a visual format. And it can just go straight to the poster on any given topic if you want it to. There's no need to start off with the literature review like I did. For me, this is useful in two ways. Firstly, if you're more of a visual learner, this is an excellent way to take in the material at a glance. And second, it's a reminder that the same data set can be presented in different ways. Sometimes a poster communicates the main ideas faster than a long written summary. Would I use this tool to actually make my conference poster? Personally, no. I still want to design those myself. I really enjoy making posters. But as a way of consuming the data, this is really effective. And it can certainly give you some ideas for making conference posters, PowerPoint presentations, SciSpace has tools to make graphics and tables. It's a really excellent tool to augment and refine your approach to science communication, which I absolutely love. So a huge thumbs up for SciSpace on the science communication front. Now this next tool genuinely surprised me. Before you start writing your paper, it's a good idea to think about which journal you're going to submit to especially when it comes to framing the paper, word counts, etc. So drop in your preliminary title, doesn't matter if it's not finished yet, and ask SciSpace for journal recommendations. As you can see, it offers tiered recommendations. So at the top, the journals that it thinks are the best fit. Then further down, it shows other options, including open access journals. It also adds some strategic notes. So whether a journal tends to publish methodological work or prefers empirical studies, or if it's stronger on pedagogy versus technical methods. This is what I mean when it comes to really ensuring that the framing of your paper matches the journal's scope, which often means that it's a good idea to shortlist some of these journals first. So that's a wrap on the SciSpace agent. You'll find a sign up link and a discount code in the description of this video, along with some example prompts that you can use with the SciSpace agent to use the different tools. I'd love to hear what you think of SciSpace. Are tools like this the future of academic workflows? And what would you like to see SciSpace do that it doesn't already? Let me know in the comments. And if you would like more practical, no hype reviews of research tools that make your workflow a little bit easier, please subscribe to the PhD Place. Thanks for watching and as always, good luck on your academic journey.